Hello folks, I hope that you are having just a great, great, great day today. Today I have the pleasure of bringing to you one of my favorite fantasy novels of all time, The Seven Altars of Dusara, um, written by Lawrence Watt Evans. It's a really fun novel and I like it a lot. Um, this, this series was very influential on me, the Lords of Dust series, it's a quartet of four books. Um, I've already reviewed for you The Lair of the Basilisk. Uh, which was uh, our, which I reviewed for you last week, um, which I knocked out uh, myself uh, recently. Uh, again, going back to it, uh, I haven't read these, these four books in, in probably a little bit more than 10 years, so it's been a while. Um, I knocked out uh, the Seven Altars of Dusara in a day uh, while I was um, over on vacation for spring break. Um, and so I'm recording it now that I'm back from spring break. Uh, and well, as well as the other couple books I finished over Spring Break, Shieldbreaker Story and uh, Flare of the Basilisk. Uh, I, I love this story. It's, it's so well done by Lawrence White Evans. I'm going to be giving it a 9 out of 10. Um, this is my favorite book by Lawrence Watt Evans. Uh, and I have like more than 20 of his books. Um, he is just a, such a strong, uh, strong, strong story when it comes to the Seven Orders of Desire. He's hitting it, knocking it out of the fence. Um, and I, I just could not, could not recommend, uh, this series more. And it's because of this, this book, because of the series. The first book is only a six out of 10. It's his first novel he had ever written, Lord of the Basilisk. And he published it shortly thereafter. Um, this one though is, it's just, it's just an absolute, uh, uh, page turner. Just absolutely love it. it. Took me about four hours for me to read it again, uh, probably for the fifth time. Um, I, I encountered this series uh, when I was a kid, um, and I loved it uh, a lot, and I devoured it very quickly. And I, anyway, so let's go ahead and take a look and see, see what's happening. Anyway, um, in, in our first book in the series, we're introduced to our main character, who is Garth. He is an Overman. He's, uh, you will find out that Overman are a magical construct by a wizard about a thousand years ago, uh, and they're... Um, uh, taller than normal men, they have, they're furry, they have no nose, they have just a nose slit, they've got red eyes. Um, they have, a, instead of a, a, a pinky, they have a second opposable thumb here, which allows for heavy levels of manual dexterity. Um, they are an incredibly strong and powerful race. Uh, after the race wars with the humans, they were banished um, and are living up in the northern wastes. One of their princes is named Garth, who is our main protagonist for the story. Garth, um, in the first book, did a quest for the Forgotten King, who is King of Yellow, who is the king of Old Carcosa, uh, of Old Forgotten Carcosa, which is a a a, a nod uh, to to uh, Chambers' uh, King in Yellow. Um, as this person is, is a king, forgotten king, in yellow rags, um, who was the king of forgotten Carcosa, uh, which is also mentioned. Uh, it's, it's an inhabitant of Carcosa by Edward Beers, which is also mentioned um, as a place by Robert Chambers. Uh, so it's a, it's a reference to Robert Chambers' horror story. Uh, anyway, uh, so um, he was told in the first book and in the first prelude by the wise women of his home, in the northern wastes uh, that in order for him to get uh, the wish that he wants to be remembered um, he needs to serve the forgotten king uh, so he in, in the first book he goes and he finds a basilisk and brings it back um, for the for the king um, in the second book um, we open up he has uh, the forgotten king has rewarded him by, by showing him that Skelleth, the the old ancient forgotten outpost um, that has uh, worn down with time as the centuries of the hunt, of the race wars have have ended, um, and it used to be this major major human outpost um, on the border, but now it's become uh, you know over hundred years of decay um, and decrepitude has set in. It's a, a ruined ramshackle of what it used to be, um, and there are just ruins and and everything's you know you know sort of in that in that sort of sort of an era of decay. And um, the Northern Wastes are also really hard, really bitter, and that sort of a thing. And the Forgotten King suggests at the end of the first book that what he does is he opens up trade between the two people. The people of Skelf and the people of his hometown of Ordunna, which is the capital of the Northern Wastes. Um, and so Garth, uh, we will open up with Garth bringing down a, a trading expedition 
from his home and he's brought with him the master trader cult um who's also sometimes going to be your protagonist he'll actually have like maybe a chapter or half a chapter here and there um in in the rest in the rest of the series he has, he has a, a small section in book uh three as well as book two so sort of um and so it, uh, so he'll, he'll sometimes be, you know, a secondary character um, as the master trader who's going to be, you know, the guy who's going to be the diplomat. He, tra he used to trade with humans, getting insults from them uh, and that sort of a thing. So he's, uh, he's much more diplomatic than Garth is. Uh, and he brings one of his family members with him too. Um, and then the apprentice for the tradesman. And their, their job is they are going to arrive at, at Skelolith, set up, set up shop there and start trading before the Baron wakes up. Um, and then kind of be seen as a fait accompli. The Baron can't come out uh, because you know, the people are already trading with them. So we have a chapter where we're here setting up shop uh, and that sort of a thing. Uh, the Baron comes, uh, is told by his men about it. He wakes up and uh, he has Garth come in to talk to him alone. Uh, so Garth goes and talks to him alone. He doesn't like it. He's going to... Uh, so basically what winds up happening is that the Baron offers, because they're still technically at war, uh, with the Overman offers to have the Overman swear allegiance and fealty to him and thus surrender, if you will, uh, to the humans and thus uh, become part of his fealty, um, his, 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 his thing. And, and he makes, he promises Garth, because Garth sees this as really the only place that he can, so he can trade with other than the, 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 these, these raiders that, that, are, that are the only other people that they can trade with. So he sees this as a lifeline for his people. He really wants to save his people. Uh, and so he swallows it and he accepts that he will give an offer to his people as soon as he returns to Ordun to, to the council, uh, the offer to join uh, the thing, and he'll do so fairly. He won't, he won't do it in a biased way. He swears that. And Overman Tictor swears very, very seriously. We saw that from Garth in the first story. Um, he takes it very, very seriously. So that winds up happening. Uh, and so, so now he heads back and he's like, I can't go back to Ordanum because, because we're not going to join, uh, the thing. So he's trying to figure out what he wants to do. Um, he heads over to the King's Inn, talks to the Forgotten King. The King has a second, second quest for him. So he decides to take the quest. Um, and, and the Forgotten King tells him after you've done this quest, you will get to a place where you'll have a better idea and a better understanding. Um, and a better way of handling that the Baron. Um, so Garf does the quest for, when the quest is for him to go to far-flung Dasara, um, and then after arriving at far-flung Dasara, um, to rob what is on the altars of the seven temples that are in Dasara. Hence the name of the book, The Seven Altars of Dasara. He doesn't know much about Dasara, um, or, or the country that's in the Kedah, uh, which is, so, so he's going to be heading out for it. Now, um, Lawrence Holt Evans is a good writer, so what's going to wind up happening is, rather than reading like 50 pages of his journey to Dasara, which would be pretty boring stuff, you'd have to spice it up by adding things, what he does is, he just immediately after that chapter, he moves us to the village before Dasara, because there's an, an encounter there. Um, and we and we we find out some and, and we find out some stuff about Garf and his his quest to Dasara. So he moves us to like a day away from Dasara, and has an encounter uh, with a local town. Takes up a chapter. Um, so uh, I, I enjoy that we don't read the journey to Dasara because this this story is about Dasara, right? Who is Dasara? What is Dasara? What's happening in Dasara? Uh, and it, it's just incredibly. Incredibly fun. And Dasara is one of my favorite cities in fantasy. I think that Lawrence Williams does a great job at fleshing it out um, in some very realistic and meaningful ways. Um, and I love it a lot. And it's been very influential on me. Um, in fact, I have written a fantasy novel. And there is a place in... There's a, one of my bad guy cities um, is based on Dasara. Uh, from this, from this novel, um, and gets a lot of inspiration from 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 the, from Dasara from this novel by Lawrence Watt Evans. Uh, it's just incredibly well done, and I could not recommend it more. Um, so, so there are that's the seven altars of Dasara by Lawrence Watt Evans. I really enjoy it. I think that that uh, you know Lawrence Watt Evans goes to a good place with it, um, and it's a lot of fun. So there you are. I'll go ahead and leave you to it. Have you read the, the Lords of Dust series? Uh, what did you think of the seven altars of Dasara? Did you like it or not? I would be more than happy to engage with it further in the comments below. If you like this video, why not hit that subscribe button? There's going to be a lot more of these reviews to follow on fantasy, science fiction, and horror. 
And then finally, hey, I just want to thank you for taking some time out of your day and watching my video. We all have so many things that are happening in our lives right now. Um, and we're being pulled in so many different directions. So the fact that you spent this time with me is incredibly humbling. And I appreciate it. So thanks again and have a great day.